group that I'm with is called Raptology. And um, Jodine is, is here from the Rare Group, and we work together. So it's really a nice, it's a nice um, working relationship. I have two very cool birds to show you. And we'll talk about them, and then we have some neat stuff you can hand, hands on when we're done with the program. But just like she said, you need to be really, really good. That means no twitching, right? No kicking, no poking your neighbor, none of that stuff. And where you are sitting now is where you need to stay. So if you don't like where you're sitting, okay, if you don't know where you're sitting and if you think that you might need to be next to your child, please move there. Okay? It, it, the, you know, and, and you, we want you to do this not so much out of respect for me, but out of respect for these very cool birds. Now, sometimes a bird does something that's called a bait, and that's when the bird jumps off my arm. Very exciting. Wait till you see how big this vulture is. We've got the bird tied. He'll be on a leash, and he'll be tied to the, tied to the glove. So what I need you to do is not make noise, is not scream. Got it? That might not even happen, but if it happens, you just got to be cool. The other thing that I guarantee will happen, especially with the vulture, is he's going to poop. He's going to poop, right? We all poop. If you don't poop, you're in serious trouble. <laughs> That's right. So when the vulture poops, be calm, OK? I don't need a lot of screaming if the vulture poops. And it's not if the vulture poops, it's when the vulture poops. OK, so no screaming, no laughing at the pooping, no hitting your neighbor, and staying in your seat. Do you think we can all do that? Yeah. All right, we're on. Let's, let's pick up the vulture. Oh, yeah. There he goes. <laughs> okay. Okay. You did very good. He pooped and you guys were quiet. Excellent. This is Gonzo Vulture. He's a turkey. He's a turkey vulture. And he's a baby. He was hatched at the end of last summer, and his parents didn't take very good care of him. And so that's why I got to keep him, because people picked him up. And he became just way too used to people, way too friendly. Um, so he is considered an imprint. And that is why this bird is not releasable. An imprint means that he's just too used to people. Um, so he's an imprint. He's a turkey vulture. And when you see the turkey vulture, you'll see a lot of them in the wild. They have, a, they have a red head. He doesn't have a red head yet because he's still a baby. When he gets older, he's going to get a red head. Oh, you what, what, what's up? <laughs> um, so he doesn't have many feathers on his head. Why do you think that is? Mm-hmm. Right, but other birds of prey will have feathers. Wait till you see our other bird of prey. He eats dead stuff. He eats disgusting dead things. And he sticks his head 
all the way in. Yeah, 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 you do. He sticks his head all the way in. So if he doesn't have feathers on his head, he can clean it up a little bit better. He also has a very cool beak. When you look at his nostril, and we'll walk him around in a bit, you will be able to see all the way through. Your nostrils aren't like that, right? No. And the reason he does that is because he hunts by smell. Most of the other raptors hunt by eyesight or by hearing, but Gonzo Vulture hunts, if he were able to go out and hunt, by smell, and that's why he's got that nice big nostril. It also makes it easier, it also makes it easier if he's got a lot of goop, dead goop in there, to just shake his head and get it out. You might be able to see his ears if he, if he sticks his head way out. He's just got little holes for ears. Are you going to show him your, you're going to show him your wings? Yeah. He's got about five and a half feet of wings here. So his wings are almost as big as an eagle's wings, but he doesn't weigh nearly as much as an eagle. Gonzo weighs probably about four and a half pounds. We haven't put him on the scale recently. Um, so when you see a vulture fly, what does it remind you of? Mm -hmm. An eagle. An eagle? No, sort of, because they're both big. Anybody can show me on your hands? How's a vulture look? Put your hands up like a vulture's wings. Exactly. V is for vulture. Oh, look at all of you. You're great. V is for vulture. And vultures sometimes look like they've had a little too much to drink, right? Because they're going like, because they're looking around waiting for some of that disgusting smell to come into their beak so they can go find it. So you'll see them, they'll go up, up, up on, the, um, on thermals. So if you're outside in summer and there's grass over here, thank you, and there's asphalt over here, which is going to be harder to st hotter, the grass or the blacktop? Blacktop. blacktop. And so hot air will come off that blacktop, and it will go up, 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 and that's a thermal. That's what these birds will use to rise up. Because flapping is a lot of work, but soaring on the wind, that's what they are built to do. <coughs> so let's... Let's see, what else, what else do we want to know about vultures? We know they eat dead meat. We know how they fly. You, don't, you won't see them here in the winter. These guys go south for the winter where there's more thermals and where snow doesn't cover stuff. Hi, hungry? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> um, he's eating beef heart. He doesn't get, you need to, he doesn't, um, he doesn't get to eat ice cream. He doesn't get to eat candy. He doesn't have to eat the fruits and vegetables. He eats dead things, and he eats meat. So just like other vultures, he's got good eyesight. He's got good hearing. But mostly, he's going to hunt by smell. So if you all sit really quietly, Gonzo Vulture is going to come around and say hi. He likes looking at you just as much as you like looking at him. Because vultures are very, very social. Lots of the other raptors aren't. But these guys like to hang out in a crowd. So look at him turn his head. Look at all his feathers. He's molting. Do you know what molting means? Molting means getting new feathers. Birds all do that. They need to keep those feathers in really good shape. Um, he also, he's looking a little scruffy because when I built his house for him, he lives in my backyard in his own little house. I put the perch so that it was kind of level with the back and I didn't realize that he was going to just do that and bust some feathers. So by fall, if they invite us back again, he will have a new set of feathers and he will be even more beautiful. Good boy. Good boy, you all are being really, really good. Good boy, good boy. 
See his nose? Isn't that a crazy nose? And crazy red head. You can see all the way through. Okay. So you guys keep being good, and we're going to give the kids on the other side a chance to see him as well. You all are doing super duper good. Hello. My face looks just like your pink shirt, says Gonzo Vulture. Oh, I like cell phones, too. I'm very good at pulling the cases off of cell phones. Ah. <laughs> he wants to go. Can you feel the nice wind that he makes? Kids, you need to stay in your seats. If you don't stay in your seats, we'll just take a break. Okay, can you see? Yeah, you need to stay down. Yep, everybody needs to stay down. It's just too hard. I know it's really exciting to see the birds, but we get into chaos and then we get into crazy bird time. Okay, so do we have, oh, you want more food? Really? Uh-uh, no eating the buttons. Okay, I think we'll do a couple questions about Gonzo, and then I think we're going to trade off a little bit on birds. Mm-hmm. Good question. Turkey vultures, like other raptors, get big really, really fast. So probably by the time he was 10 weeks old, he was as big as he was going to get. His coloring is going to change. His feather pattern will change a bit. Size is big. And Jodine's going to talk in a little bit about rehab and injured birds. Most raptors, 60%, that's like 6 out of 10, are dead before their first birthday. So it's a pretty hard life out there. Okay, yes ma'am, a gonzo question. Yes, you. How do the birds molt? They just drop off their feathers and in the morning when I go in to, to get them to, to take care of the birds, I pick up all kinds of feathers on the floor. And they're busy growing new ones. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. That was a great question. And it was how often do I need to handle him to keep him this tame? Um, I try and take this bird out every day, at least for a little bit, especially because he's a vulture and he's so social. Some birds just adapt better to captivity. He's, I've had him since November. He's pretty amazing for being this young and doing this kind of programming. Not all birds adapt as well. Um, so it just depends. Okay, yes, sir, and then we're going to switch out here. They molt once a year. They molt once a year, but it takes maybe three, three months at least until that molt gets finished. All right. Um, we're going to trade off birds here, and Jodine's going to talk to you a little bit about rescue, and then we're going to get our next bird out. A songbird of some sort, waterfowl, a duck, you can give us a call and we will do our best to try to help you uh, take care of that bird. Uh, it may not need much other than going into a nest or it may actually require some medical assistance. So uh, okay. we would ask that you give us a call so that we would be sure. able to help you with that okay. bird. Okay. Um, so we just started in uh, late October, the 1st of go. November. Yeah. We've already yeah. treated uh, about 120 sick and injured birds that have come through. Uh, and we're very, very pleased to be able to offer that service again to the Iowa City, Cedar Rapids, uh, Eastern Iowa area. So should you need some assistance from us, we're just a phone call away, and you can uh, give us a call, and we'll be glad to try to help you. We are called the Rare Group, Raptor Advocacy, Rehabilitation, and Education. 
You can find that online. You can go to theraregroup.org or www.theraregroup. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think they're getting the other bird out, so I'll clear the space. Did you hear it? Do you know what she is by listening to her? Who makes that kind of sound? Does anybody know? Oh, we'll surprise you then. Yeah? Hmm? Hawk? Nope. Listen to the, yep, in the back. Owl? Yep, this is an owl. Come on up. Yeah, you gotta go to work. I know, I know. No, babe, uh-uh. Nope, you slow down here. Good girl, Reggie Owl. Good girl. Good girl, Reggie Owl. Oh, so good. So good. Okay. This is Reggie Owl. Okay. And Reggie is a great... Okay. Reggie is a great horned owl. Okay, so her horns, okay, everybody quiet. These are her horns, but they aren't re, they aren't re, they aren't re, they aren't really horns. And they aren't really ears. They're just beautiful feathers. Reggie Owl is four, she's four years old. Okay, I'm going to ask that the photo stop. Reggie Owl is four years old. She was a teeny owl and owlet. She was teeny, teeny, teeny. And she was 50 feet up in a tree, and the nest fell. And she came crashing, crashing to the ground. She was taken to a rehab agency called Reggie, which is how she got her name. And she had all kinds of bleeding inside because she had fallen so far down. There, too, by the time they got her ready to go out, she was just very, very used to people. So just like Gonzo, Reggie is an imprint. She's four years old, and she's big. This is a big great horned owl. And do you know in the raptor world who is bigger, girls or boys? girls. In the raptor world, girls rule. And that is called reverse sexual dimorphism, if you want to go home and tell everybody what you learned today. We're not really sure why they're bigger, maybe to keep the boys in line. But she weighs, what do you think Reggie weighs? Five pounds, very close. Yep, she goes about four and a half to five. Um, she's also got a big, big wingspan. She's got a big wingspan. And look at, when we go around with this bird, okay, you can see her big eyes. You can see how her beak looks really different from Gonzo's beak. And you can see what huge feet and huge talons she has. Now, there's a little bit of blood on her foot here, but that's not her blood. No, no, no. That's last night's dinner's blood. She eats gopher. We only feed her dead food. We don't feed any live prey. She eats gophers. She eats quail. She loves mice. And she puts up her beak at rats and says, well, if that's what you're feeding me, I'm not even going to eat until tomorrow. Um, you can look at her face, and you can see that her face is just like a satellite dish. Any of you have satellite dishes? you know, for your TV, and it helps, pull, it helps pull the sound in. Having a dishy face brings the sound in. Another thing that she has that's pretty cool, last time you checked, right, your ears were on about the same place in your head, right? Do you know where her ears are? Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're kind of... Kitty Wumpus. And just why do you think that is? Well, I actually know the reason. Um, it's because she looks how she has such good hearing. And 
Mm -hmm. it, helps, it helps her localize. So I don't know if you all heard that. One ear's higher, one ear's lower. And what that does then is she hears something, she can sign up, turn her head until those, those sounds are about the same, and then she knows where that prey is. Her hearing is so good that she can hear my heartbeat. Um, she also has great eyes. If you had eyes the size of Reggie Owl, you'd be walking around with tennis balls for eyes. Most of her eyes are in her skull. You can do one thing that she can't. You can turn your eyes. You can just look with your eyes, right, from side to side. She can't do that. So to make up for that, she can swivel that head, but she can't go all the way. She can go about three quarters of the way. She can go about 270 degrees. She has these great talons, and when she eats gophers, she has gopher breath which is the most disgusting thing. I don't think she even would need talent. She could just breathe on you and you'd die. <laughs> now, if an, owl, if an owl eats stuff and can't digest it, what does she do? She barfs, she barfs yes. Well, we have a politer word for that. She gives you back a, a pellet. Have you guys dissected pellet? Yeah. Oh, God, it's Iowa City. You're so far ahead. We have some pellets you can look at. You can look at, too, because... She gives us all kinds of stuff back in her pellets. And the other sort of disgusting thing this owl does, if she has too much to eat and she's not hungry, she hides her food. And then I come in a day or two later and there's a sort of disgusting gopher head looking up at me that she's hidden around in her mew. What? You can talk for us? Okay. So everybody be really good and quiet and Reggie's going to come say hi. You know, you can do it when the, the light from your camera is pretty annoying, so do it quick. Okay? Yeah, and you can't, we'll have stuff out later that you can touch, but for obvious reasons, you can't touch the bird. Look at the feet on this bird. Look at those talons, and look at her feathers. Now, when an owl flies, does she make noise? No. When a hawk flies, they make noise. When a vulture flies, they can make noise. But oh, so silent. How it does not. It doesn't because the, ed we'll show you later. The edges of her feathers are ruffled. They're not hard. They're very soft. And so the wind can go through them. That's how they fly silently. Pretty cool, huh? And yeah. that's what it sounded like. It, I see it like it turned its head all the way over here. Yeah, I can't go all the way around. You've got seven bones in your neck. She's got 14. Okay? And so that lets her do that extra twist. No, you can't do it. However hard you try, you can't do it. You probably don't eat raw gopher either. <laughs> you look at her eyes. I know. She's beautiful. Ooh. Okay, we'll go around to one more. Okay, shh. We had a question, which is how long does she live? If she's lucky, and stuff can always happen, she could get to be 30 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, the turkey vultures probably get in their late teens, maybe early 20s. I don't know, Jodine, you want to add more to that? Oh, you guys are being so good. I am so pleased with all of you. Good job, Reggie. Good job. Okay, we're going to do a couple questions about Reggie Owl, and then I think we're going to put her away. And then we have all kinds of neat stuff that you guys can touch. And you're talking? What do you have to say? Oh, I know what we haven't done. Okay, we'll take a couple questions and then we'll finish by hooting. Okay, you sir in the blue shirt, blue t-shirt. Okay, I need everybody quiet, please, so I can hear the question. How many toes does she have? She has four toes. The biggest is her hallux, and that's her back toe. That would be like the big toe on your foot. And then she's got three that go forward. And one of her talons has a ridge in it to help her preen her feathers. Good question. Um, who hasn't done a question? Shh, shh, shh. Um, you said that she's got eight toes. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, the question is, do the two birds live together? Don't wave your hand. Waving is no good. Um, do the two birds live together? No, they probably could, but we just don't take any chances. So they all live in my backyard and they all have their own personal enclosure. And we have the owl and we have the um, turkey vulture and a red tail hawk and a little falcon. Yes, ma'am. What's she doing? This is called, this is called, I forgot I have the mic. This is called, what she's doing is called guller fluttering. And she does that when she's hot. It's a little bit hot in here and she's got a lot of feathers. And she also does it if she's a little bit nervous. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you a little bit of hooting and then we're gonna, we're gonna be done for a while. So, there are two kinds of owls that you are likely to see and hear in Iowa City. One is a great horned owl, like Reggie, and she says, who's awake? Me too. Who's awake? Me too. Oh, 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 oh. Want to try it? Oh, 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 oh. So if you hear that, you're going to hear a great horn. The one that you hear even more is a barred owl. They are almost the size of a great horn, but they don't have the ear tufts, and they have dark, dark eyes. And those are the guys with the really crazy sounds. They go, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you all? Woo, 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 woo. And then they laugh, and they scream, and they carry on. So those are the ones you're going to hear. OK, ready? Woo, 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 On this side? Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. OK, and now I'm going to teach you what the turkey vulture does. The turkey vulture doesn't have much of a voice. And when the turkey vulture gets annoyed, he goes, Shh. Why? Because that's what he does. OK, so this side, when I point to you, you are great horned owls. This side, when I point to you, you are barred owls. And all of the adults in the back are turkey vultures. OK, are you ready? Who are you guys? Great Horns. OK, let's go, Great Horns. Oh, 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 oh. OK, Bards. Oh, 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 oh. Turkey vultures. Thank you very much, folks. <laughs> All right, uh, librarian, please. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to put Reggie away. We'll see what we're going to do with Gonzo. We have a whole bunch of stuff for people. If you are done with the program, once we get the bird away, you are free to go. You have been a great audience, and I hope you've enjoyed it. We've really enjoyed being here with you. If you want to stay around, then Jim and Mary um, will help you. We have some wings and some feet and some really cool things that you guys can look at. So let me get Reggie away, and then folks who want to go can go, and anybody who wants to stay is welcome to come and look at our stuff. You want to help me, Jim? I know, you are, you are the, oh, you're so good. You are such a lovely owl.